You're listening to Winnipeg's Classic 107. My name is Simon Rusnak. Winnipeg's premier chamber music concert series, Virtuosi, has a new artistic director at its helm. Jennifer Deason was appointed by the Board of Directors and Selection Committee and announced in her new role last week. Joining me on Morning Light via video chat is Jennifer Now. Hello. Hi, Simon. Well, con- uh, it's so great to have you. Congrats on the new gig. Thank you so much. Uh, so I'm be- really thrilled. Oh, I, I mean, I think we're all thrilled. Uh, so before we get chatting a little bit more about Virtuosi and, and your vision, I, I'm wondering if you could first reintroduce yourself to, to Winnipeg audiences. I know that you're originally from Austin, Manitoba. You did some studies here, uh, though you spent the last 20 years in Montreal, right? That's right. Yeah. So I grew up on a farm near Austin, Manitoba, and I moved to Winnipeg after high school. And I actually did a theology degree at what was then Canadian Mennonite Bible College. It's now CMU. And realized I just wanted to play music all day. So I ended up going to the University of Manitoba after that. I did two years there and then moved to Ottawa, actually, in 2001. Finished my bachelor's degree there and my did my master's in Montreal at the University of Montreal. And then stayed as it, as it can happen. I ended up staying in Montreal until this past summer. Uh, so we know that Montreal has a, a pretty fantastic music scene, not unlike the scene here in Winnipeg. What what kept you in Montreal? What, what kept you busy in, in Montreal over over the past two decades? Um, well, right after school, I started doing kind of more mostly orchestral kind of work, a lot of that kind of thing. My training was a totally classical uh, viola performance master's degree. And I went into, I always loved chamber music, first of all. Uh, but when you're coming out of music school and you're trying to gig, you basically do whatever you can get. You take them all. You take, <laughs> you take them all. all. So honestly, it's been everything from orchestral work to um, I gradually moved more into my own projects, which was always kind of the goal. I really love creating music as well as playing um, existing works. I started working with composers a lot. And then I've always done songwriting as well. It used to be kind of on the side. And then I brought that more into my my practice as well, and free improvisation, which has kind of turned into um, composition in kind of non-traditional ways mm. and a lot of collaboration with with uh, colleagues who do really interesting things as well. So I think Montreal is great. It's a great place to try things and start things. There's so many different scenes there. So you can dabble a bit, you know, I, I did a bit of Baroque music, a bit of new music, a bit of songwriting. It's a place where you can really experiment try things people are always starting something new there's always somebody new in town uh there's so many different series and you really have to push yourself to to keep up and stay in the game and there's a kind of hustle there that has been great and also exhausting (laughs) for the last while so in a way yeah my partner ben and i we were both sort of ready he's from here as well uh we had off and talked about moving back here and then when COVID hit Uh, and everything stopped our work stopped for a while and you know we started thinking about family most of our family lives in Manitoba on both sides so um yeah there were a lot of factors but COVID was really our our sort of tipping point that got us really thinking about moving back so yeah, it had a lot of people reflecting on a lot of different things, right? And, um, you know, to, to move from the big city of Montreal back to Winnipeg in the midst of a pandemic, like you say, the, the whole world stopped and, uh, you know, has mm-hmm. kind of sputtered since. Um, what's it been like being back in town? Oh, it's great. I think we laughed so hard the first day uh, we left our house because we moved in the summer. So there was still a quarantine period. So we were basically in the house we had bought without seeing it (laughs) from a friend, which was great, but we did that whole whole experience of buying a house we had never seen in person. Um, So we were in our house for a couple of weeks settling in. And the first day we left, I think we saw five people that we know, five separate people. (laughs) Yeah, welcome back to Manitoba. (laughs) Yeah, that was great. It really, it has sort of set the tone for, for what has happened since then in the past six months, which has been you know, family and friends, whether in person or on the phone, as we've all dealt with the changes of, of every new phase of this time, you know, but just knowing we're surrounded here, we have old friends, we have family. Um, Yeah, it's been, 
it's been really, really nice. Yeah. And a lot of change, of course, I miss Montreal and the people and just places and everything there a lot. I was able to go back a couple of times in the fall for different uh, performances and projects, which was great. Um, and when it's possible, I'm hoping to do a, a certain amount of back and forth traveling. I'll be continuing to perform a lot and mm -hmm. like new music and all that kind of stuff. But it does, it feels great. I do sort of feel like a fish back in water. It's like, yeah. oh, I know how to do life here. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. know, the way people relate to each other. There's just a way of being here that, that is just so right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm so glad. I'm yeah, so sorry. glad to hear that. I, I really, really am. And, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you mentioned um, being in Montreal and, and still going back there and commuting back there when, when you know, you, you're allowed to do so. Um, but it's not like you haven't been back to the city. We've had you in the Classic 107 studio before with your music life partner, um, Ben, together known as the Park Sounds duo. You were in for a conversation ahead of a, a Groundswell show. And, and like you just kind of ran us through in, in your bio there, you've been an active chamber musician and a collaborator and a performer and a songwriter and a music experimenter and historical performer and, and all that for years. And I'm sure I'm missing many errs somewhere in there, but um, to kind of bring us to the to the big thing at hand, I, I'm wondering, you know, does artistic director of Virtuosi just seem like the the next step in in your journey as a creative? It does, and for a while, I've been wanting to move into a position in which I could make a space for other people to make music as well. So I have benefited from so many wonderful presenters, curators, um, directors, that kind of thing. And, but have until now always been in the position of, you know, booking my own projects, trying to make things happen for myself, doing all that promo on your own and all of mm. those kind of things. And also noticing the work of people I know, people I admire, people I don't know, but admire <laughs> all these kind of things. And, knowing that the music industry can use, you know, it, 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 it has a need to, to evolve and grow and work on itself and mm -hmm. be as fair and safe and uh, diverse a place as possible. We all know that that, you know, we still have work to do mm -hmm. and yeah, for a while I've been wanting, feeling kind of a curiosity about what it would be like to move into a leadership position and be able to contribute to that, to a, yeah, the kind of industry that I want to work in and hopefully be able to improve it, make it better, um, more interesting, more, yeah, diverse and equal and fair and all of the, the, the things that we know, the changes that we know need to happen. So if there's some way, I don't know the an all the answers of how to do that, uh, but I, I want to have a lot of conversations with people and and learn, see what what we can do, you know, even within one organization, what can we do to to make one space that feels great and where people feel welcome to come to listen to play to offer their story, their skills, all of that kind of thing. And I think so, that, yeah. I, I think that's what's really special too about the fact that you've 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 taken over at the helm of uh, a, a, a a chamber music concert series because chamber music at its core, right, is this conversation, this making music with with friends and and an audience or maybe not an audience, but that idea of conversation is so often brought up when we talk about chamber music, right? Absolutely. And that's the side of chamber music I really love and have always loved. Exactly, like exactly as you say, whether there's an audience or not, you know, when I was in university and first discovered the chamber music party, I was like, this is, you know, the ideal way to spend your time. And it's what, you know, in the European classical tradition, chamber music is, you know, it's music de chambre, yeah. like it's music to be made at home in a room. Yeah. And it's often, you know, it was for social purposes. It was a way for people to get together. It was intended to inspire conversation and happen in a social setting. And, um, you know, there are, people do studies on these kinds of things too. And, but, you know, anyone who plays hide and string quartets, for example, or something like that knows that there are little jokes, you know, between mm -hmm. the viola and the second violin or whoever, you know, all the different roles. So it is this kind of almost a theater, like a party game, like from the classical, period so it comes from this really specific context but I think the format 
and the spirit of it can be kept while the who's doing it and what it becomes can evolve and include so many more people. So, you know, while we recognize where it comes from and all of the repertoire that has come out of that tradition mm -hmm. and we can value all of that, the, I, for me, what's really at the core is that kind of friendship conversation, the fact that it happens in an intimate setting, maybe there's an audience, but it's not going to be a concert hall sized audience. You're going to be able to, you know, see the sweat on the cellist brow and the, or whatever, you know, yeah, all yeah, it's all, it's all, it's all part of the experience. And it's all part of the magic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. If you're just tuning in, I'm chatting with Jennifer Thiessen, uh, the recently announced artistic director of Virtuosi Concert Seasons. Uh, Jennifer, I was, I was on your website before this interview, and uh, I read the blog post about your move back to Winnipeg and what your future might look like professionally and how throughout your career you've had a, quote, snarly survival instinct, <laughs> which is just a great, great line in and of itself. Uh, it seems to me like that never say die attitude is going to be really well suited to this new role. You take over the reins at a rather pivotal moment i mean uh it's been a it's been a challenge it's been a slog for the past now two years or so so i guess this next question this last big question is a bit of a two-parter uh with the recent announcement of the postponement of the january 16th buoy Doucet concert which was to be your kickoff uh you, you, you could you speak a little bit more to navigating the next few days and and, and weeks uh with the challenges presented by the ongoing COVID 19 pandemic yeah, absolutely. And that decision was a total heartbreaker. That was tough. The day we decided to postpone that concert was the day that my job was announced. So it was the previous day we had been in deliberating all day. So, you know, half planning the concert and half saying we might have to not do this. Mm -hmm. And then that was Monday, Tuesday, my job was announced on social media and we pulled the plug on the concert and I had two weeks of work elsewhere canceled as well myself. So it was just, it was one of these moments. I'm glad you reminded me of my <laughs> snarly survival instincts because it, it is necessary at this time and for all performers, everyone who works in the arts and all of the public you know anything that has a public gathering element like this mm -hmm. is just the worst time for working and it's you know you have plans your hopes get raised you want to be optimistic and move forward but this time is what it is and so you have to respond and you have to keep people's safety in mind so right now in manitoba we wouldn't have had to cancel that concert and we, which is what made the decision so hard as well. You can't point a finger mm -hmm. anywhere else and say, somebody made me do it. Like we really had to consider the safety of everyone, the audience, all, you know, everyone volunteering there, the artists flying in and we had to make that call. So moving forward so far, we are planning to continue. Our next concert would be February. Uh, February 11th. And that is still in the works. Obviously we're keeping an eye on what happens and we'll, we'll make, decisions um with everyone's safety in mind so, but it's yeah we're really hoping we don't have to cancel that one so <laughs> you know not to get away from you know the, the dif difficulty and and downer side of it then let's look to the the brighter future um you know virtuosi heading into the fourth decade uh you've already spoken a little bit more to uh you've already spoken to this but could you tell us a little bit more about your vision for the organization maybe not so much in the the programming but in the the culture you hope to to craft and and, and create Hmm. I hope that Virtuosi could become a place where anyone who's interested in music would feel welcome and where anyone who was just curious and didn't know that they, you know, that a classical music concert would be their obvious choice of something to do on a Friday night or a Sunday afternoon would consider oh, I know there's great music there. There's always something interesting. Sometimes there's artists who do something other than music who are paired with music. And um, yeah, I hope that people feel like they can see themselves in the performers, in the composers, in the kind of music that's happening as well. Um, yeah, and I do, I mean, the, even the name of the organization is interesting to me. So Virtuosi Concerts and 
I think the word virtuoso for me has sometimes been complicated as a performer because I haven't felt like that whiz kid who can, you know, play the hardest concerto at the youngest age and win a prize. And so for me, making music is so much about that conversation and about, it really is about excellence, but in a really broad way that and multifaceted kind of definition of, of what excellence is and what virtuosity is and what makes putting a concert on worthwhile. Um, yeah, and for me, it, it has it has a side that's about emotional depth and creative ways of um, making an environment for people to uh, experience their memories and emotions and that sort of almost therapeutic side of going to hear music mm -hmm. or honestly, you know, going to see art or watch a movie or, you know, take in some sort of a artistic um, um, experience for me it has all of these sides and I hope that yeah I think my vision for the series is to include all of these elements in our definition of what virtuosity is yeah no I, I think you know you really hit the nail on the head I was on the virtuosity website and uh, looking at the the mandate and and, and virtuosity talks about programming that nourishes the soul and it sounds like that's exactly what you're trying to put forth and and you know virtuosity talks about pillars of classical canon but also the introduction of new works and these unheard voices of the past and the present so uh, very excited to see jennifer uh, what you and and virtuosity do uh, in in the near future and then the far future as well uh, in this most noble endeavor that is music making and presenting live concerts thanks so much for chatting with me today my pleasure thanks for having me